This is part 38 of ASP.NET MVC tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss implementing checkbox list in ASP.NET MVC. Please watch part 37 before proceeding. We'll be using this table TBL city for this demo. For every city that we have got in this table, we want to generate a checkbox control. If the user selects multiple cities, and then once he clicks on the submit button, we want to display a message stating, you selected, and whatever cities the user has selected. On the other hand, if the user didn't select any city, and then once he clicks on a submit button, then we want to display a message stating, you didn't select any city. Let's say you have to achieve this. Let's flip to Visual Studio. And to retrieve data from the database, we'll be using ADO.NET Entity Framework. So obviously the first step here is to add ADO.NET Entity Data Model. So let's right click on the Models folder, add a new item. Click on Data under Installed Templates, select ADO.NET Entity Data Model, and let's name this Sample Data Model. Click Add, and we want to generate the model from database. Select that, click Next, and give a name to the connection string, Sample DB Context. And ADO.NET Entity Framework is going to automatically generate a context class for us with the same name which we will be using to connect to the database. So click Next. This is going to connect to the database and retrieve all the tables, views, and stored procedures that are present within the database. And we want to generate an entity for TBL city table. So let's go ahead and select that. And we want our entities to live in a namespace called models. Click Finish. So this should generate an entity with name TBL city, but we want our entities to be called as you know city instead of TBL city. So let's change it accordingly and then save everything. Let's go ahead and build the solution. And now let's go ahead and implement the home controller. Now notice that ADO.NET Entity Framework has automatically generated two class two classes for us. One is the sample DB context class, which will help us connect to the database automatically. And the other one is the entity class, you know, the city class. And this city class is going to have, you know, properties for these three columns, ID, name, and the selected. All right. And notice that these classes are actually living in this namespace, mvcdemo.models. Since we want to use these classes within our home controller, let's go ahead and include this namespace within the home controller. So let's use the using statement MVC demo dot models. And then let's implement the index action. So within index action, I'm going to create an instance of a sample DB context class. And then this class has got this cities property, which is going to return the list of cities. And we are going to pass the list to the view for rendering. And before we add the index view, I'm going to create you know, an editor template to display an editor for city. In a bit, you'll understand how we are going to make use of these editor templates. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to add a folder to the views. So I'm going to right click on views, add a new folder, and let's name this home. So this folder is going to contain all the views related to the home controller. And within this home folder, I'm going to add another folder and I'm going to name this editor templates. So all the editor templates related to, you know, home controller are going to live in this folder. Okay? And I'm going to add a view to this folder. And let's name it city. Now, I want this template to be an editor template for city um, class. So I'm naming the view with the same name as that of the class. So we give the editor templates and display templates the same name as that of the types, that is classes or structures. We'll discuss, you know, editor templates and display templates in a great detail in a later video session. So the name of the view is going to be city. We're going to make use of Razor View Engine. And we're going to create a strongly typed view against city. And for now, the scaffold template is going to be empty. So let's click Add. So this should generate city view. And then notice that the model for this view is going to be city. I'm going to get rid of the rest of the code here. So now, if you look at the city class, it should have these three properties. ID, name is selected. Now, 
whether if a checkbox is selected or not, you know, which property is determining that is selected property of city class. Okay, so I want to have a checkbox control to be generated, and to generate a checkbox control in MVC, we can use uh, checkbox for HTML helper. So at HTML dot checkbox for, and we are going to pass uh, a lambda expression here, and this expression uh, is going to determine whether you know. Look at this whether this checkbox is selected or not, which property is going to determine that is selected property. So that's what we are going to pass as the lambda expression here. So x such that x dot is selected. And what is x here? Nothing but the model for this view. And look at this, is selected is going to return true or false. All right, now after the checkbox is displayed, next to the checkbox we want to have the city name. And to display the name of the city, I'm going to use another helper called display for and then lambda expression identifying the name of the city. Okay, so this is going to determine whether the checkbox is selected or not, and this is going to display the name for the checkbox. Okay, and then you know I want to also retain the ID and the name when when we post this form you know when we post this form back to the server we want to retain the value for you know the id which is nothing but the uh, city id and then the name of the city now at the moment to display the name of the city we are using display for template so if i have to remember and post the value the city value city name value back to the server then i have to store it somewhere so i'm going to use a hidden field and store both id and name so add html dot hidden for x such that x dot id and similarly i'm going to use another hidden control to store the name okay so this is the editor template for our city, for individual city. And then now let's go to the home controller and actually add the index view. So add a view. The name of the view is going to be index. We're going to make use of razor view engine. And we are going to create a strongly typed view against city. And for now, the scaffold template is going to again be empty. So let's click add. So this should add index view within the home folder. Now, look at this. On the view, we want the list of cities. So the model for this view is actually going to be I enumerable of cities. And then let's use a div tag and set the font family to area. Okay, so now we need to generate the form tag, and to generate the form tag, we can use begin form HTML helper. So this is going to generate the opening and closing form tag for us, and within this, now notice this, we are going to make use of this editor template in this index view. So what I'm going to do here I'm going to use an HTML helper here called editor for editor for model okay now notice that here the moment we call this function editor for model MVC by convention what it's going to look is it's going to look for a an editor, I mean a, a template with the same name as that of this type. So what's the model for this class? City. Okay, so the, and, and the type is basically nothing but the class. Okay, the type here is city. So is there a template with the same name as that of this type either in the folder where we have this view so here there's a folder called editor template so it's going to look in the inside that folder okay so I have a template with the same name so 
this method call it's automatically going to use that template here because the template name matches the name of the class that is the type name okay and then we want an HTML break and then a button to submit the page so I'm going to use an input type is equal to submit value is also going to be submit so obviously when we kick click on this button what's what's going to happen it's going to post the page to the server and when that happens we need to have an action method within the home controller to handle that so let's add another index action method so this index action method is going to respond to the get operation so let's decorate that with HTTP get attribute and this action method should respond to the post operation so let's decorate this with HTTP POST. All right. So when we actually post this form, it's going to receive this list of city objects, which is nothing but I enumerable of city objects. So this function is going to receive I enumerable of city. And let's name it cities. And if you remember, what message we want to display if the user uh, didn't select any of the cities and then once you click on the submit button we want to display a message stating you didn't select any city and for now let's return just a simple string from this controller action method so if the count of the cities x such that x dot is selected so if the set if is selected property is if the count is zero then we know for sure you know no cities are selected in which case we want to you know return a message stating you didn't select any city On the other hand, you know, if this condition is false, then we know for sure the user has selected a city, in which case we want to build a message stating you selected in whatever cities the user has selected. And to build that message, I'm going to make use of string builder class. And this thing builder class is present in a different namespace called system.txt. So let's go ahead and include that. And let's create an instance of the string builder class. and let's append a string sp dot append so you selected and then we are going to loop through each city so for each city in the cities collection that is coming inside this action method so we are going to loop through that and if city dot is selected if that is selected then we want to you know to this message we want to append the name of the city so what we're gonna do sp dot append to the string builder city dot name and then we want a comma next to that so if you have selected multiple cities uh, you know we want to display you selected New York comma Sydney comma Mumbai whatever the user has selected so this is what is going to display that comma and then finally we want to return the string builder object in the form of a string so convert that to string and return that back okay but then notice that with this code what's going to happen is if I select two cities for example New York and Sydney there's going to be comma in the end New York comma Sydney comma we don't want that comma in the end so let's get rid of that and how do we do that uh, we can use of a string manipulation a function so let's actually see that in action so sp dot there is a function called remove and then to remove some characters from that string you need to specify the start index and how many characters you want to remove okay so I want to retrieve here the last index of the last comma within a string and to do that 
So let's use that string builder object dot to string and then get the last index of comma. So that is going to give us the start index from where you want to remove characters and the next parameter is going to be how many characters. What is the number of characters that you want to remove? Only one. That's it. With all these changes, let's actually go ahead and run this and see if it works as expected. So now it should display for each city a checkbox control within this index view. Okay, so let's select New York and Sydney, click on Submit. Notice that you selected New York, Sydney. On the other hand, if I don't select any of the cities, click Submit, you didn't select any city. All right. On this slide, you can find resources for ASP.NET C Sharp and SQL Server interview questions. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.